Yo. What the fuck, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we're here, man. The grind. This is where we find out about people's hustle, what they do, what gets them up and active. And we are with TJ Dolan from Dolan Classics. This is this is this is nuts. I think people are gonna gonna see some very rare gems. It's all a bit lock stock out here in your little lock up and yeah, we've got a good little hideout space. You know, it's it's good. It's a bit good. snatch, a bit gangster. Well, certain things are. I mean, <laughs> I reckon there's a few been in the back of that at this time. This is nuts. Yeah, he's a little, uh, a little mascot. Man. He came Chip. with it, man. <laughs> How old is this car? 1947, so it's 73. Crazy. So this is like an official cop car. This is an official old police car. Still with its working bell. Cool, give it a go, man. Let's hear it. It's loud, man. Jesus, man. It is loud as well, man. I feel it, yeah. <laughs> Would you say you're like strictly like a dealer? or a collector, or it's a bit of both? It's like... a bit of both. I'm an enthusiast. I mean, I bought my first classic car when I was like 19, 20, and I've never owned a modern car since. It's just slowly progressed through experience just into a, a small business. Mm. And so I get to drive the things I've always wanted to drive, just experience the different cars for, for what they can give, really. Yes. This is what we came for. Yeah, well, this is what you came for. <laughs> this, is, this is, I mean, these are just amazing. I mean, such a big beast, but so elegant to drive, like literally two and a half tons, and you can steer it with two fingers. It's just, Ooh, it's just all there. I mean, like I say, they, they cost something like 10 grand, which in the equivalent money time was over 110 grand new. Yeah. So you were paying for quality, but you were getting stuff that was completely out of the box. Yeah, I, I think it's insane that this car is nearly 50 years old and it's got it electric is. seats. It's mad. <laughs> it's wild. I only buy stuff I like. I only buy stuff visually I like or whether I like the way it's designed or whatever. I should buy more things that I know are going to make me money, but I don't do that. I mean, yeah, and I feel like this like appeals to your creative nature because obviously me and you have known each other for quite a long yeah, time now, really. Absolutely. Actually. Long but, time. Uh, you know, I know you as an artist. I know yeah. you as Crick, yeah. the, the artist as well. And I never thought that classic car collection, dealing, all of yeah. that sort of stuff is where you would kind of end up, but... It's one of them where visually it made total sense to me. That's why when I was a kid I always wanted a classic car because my work's all about like form and shape and these cars have the wings, the essence, it's all there. So visually it looks like the kind of thing I paint to me. I can see it happening, man. Now, you might have converted me into mm -hmm. a classic you, you car, a big, man, for real. Big horn. You know what I mean? No messing. People are getting yeah, out we gonna take something for a spin. Yeah, man. Love you, man. I'm gonna take that one. As an artist, as Crick like you spent like some time in the pen, you spent some time locked up yeah. for, for art. Yeah, absolutely. It's like certain things just happen that are out of control. And it's like, that was a crazy case just considering what had happened in the past with other cases previously, other cases. It's like, you know, our barrister was expecting us to get maybe six months. And then it's like, the judge read me three years. It was like totally out of the box. But it's just, the world is a crazy place and if you, things can happen and it's the same with the car game same with graffiti it's like you've just got to you've got to take you know you got to learn from your experiences it's like I'm, I'm glad that I ended up going there because I learned so much about the system works and just met completely crazy people and just give me a really good perspective on sort of life and what I'm doing and how lucky I'm to be in a position to, to be doing what I'm doing some of the more difficult parts of like classic ownership is about you know breakdowns and yeah, for example, like, I literally, from the age of 19 to now, been driving classic cars, and they often break down, especially when you start having done what you're doing, to the point where I'm actually banned. I think most people may break down once or twice a year. I was breaking down once or twice a week for, like, two years, and they were like, this kid just needs to go. So, you know, you learn, you hear things, 
you hear this noise and you're like, oh, it's the fuel pump. And now you can get out sometimes, you can hit him with a hammer, it goes. <laughs> this is how it, you know, you learn basic things. These are basic cars. Well, that's what I did. I just get on the train, I'd buy the car, I'd try and drive it back. Sometimes it wouldn't get back, do you know what I mean? 95% of these all over the world are rotten as a peach. This is gorgeous. <laughs> this is so solid, so straight. And is this all original paintwork? Yeah, this is a colour called Peruga Rosso. Gorgeous, like a purpley pink. This is where we come back to your um, yeah. art life, this right? This you know is, what I mean? Yeah, this Peruga, yeah, yeah. Peruga Man, pink. This, like, Let's yeah. you as an artist. Always loved this car. What's the weird one okay. that somebody bought and you was like, nah, I'll see you later? I go through phases, right? So I might go for like an Italian phase. So for six months, I would just be buying Italian cars. Ultimately, they're, they're the ones for me. They're the ones. Design, everything. But I went through like a weird micro car period. So I was buying these tiny little vehicles. And uh, I went to buy a Morris Minor in Wales. And this guy was like, oh, do you want to see this? And he opened this tiny little shed. And this vehicle was called uh, a Lama. It's 1940, I can't even tell you now. I think it's 47, 46. And it was designed to fit through an English garden fence and it's the heaviest thing on earth. So I was like, I agreed to buy it. I came back and thought we just put it in the back of a van. It took about six blokes to lift it. Could, could not move this thing. For anything this like out there, I feel like, you know, it can't exist without passion. 100%, it's like we're here once. When I left school, I'd never had a normal job. I'd never had a job. I've worked at Tesco for maybe two months. And I was just like, this just isn't for me. And that's how I got into doing the art work and the youth work and just kind of making my own money. I always have done that way. That was kind of ingrained in me from a kid, just from my upbringing, my grandparents, that kind of thing. And um, just, you just just make it work, just, you know what I mean? It's like, you've got to do stuff that you love all the time, otherwise, what are you doing it for? We keep hearing about, you know, at some stage in the very near future, yeah. cars that run on diesel and petrol are gonna, you know, be yeah. phased out completely, you know, yeah. not legal for the road, not possible for the environment. I suppose that means that all of the cars that you own at the moment, in a situation like that, they would become artifacts. Yeah, I'm not sure. At the moment, it's a really good, viable financial way to drive if you get the right car. But in the future, who knows? Yeah, they could literally just become bloody props. Who knows? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. See, if I was a guy like, yo, I'm making some content, I want to buy a classic car, I'll give you double the asking, we're going to throw a hand grenade in it. I mean, that's a tough one. It'd be hard to say no, but for something like that, no way. I no way. Not let it blow it up, no way. Nah. That, that would be criminal. I'm starting to realise there's some things that you don't want to let go of. This is one of them. I'm and the police I'm car is another one. Yeah, I've started to realise there's yeah. a few things here where you're like, it's just, you don't want to let them go. I'm, I've had my fun, I've been enjoying them, but it's like, it, it, I'm never going to find one like that again. I'm not going to find one of them, I'm not going to find a police car like that. Everything I do is an experience and everything works towards this bigger picture. And I believe you can take experiences from everything. So from doing graffiti, from buying and selling cars, from doing, it's all just my little story, my work, and this is you know what I'm, what I'm doing with it right now.